Blackmagic Design just released the Studio Camera 4K Pro and what a cool camera that is. The returning problem is that if you are not using Blackmagic's own ATEM switches and general infrastructure, then you can't shade this camera, you can't adjust the colors. But the good news is that of course you can do it with a Skahoy RCP if you attach it to an Ethernet SDI link that will make this a networked operation. I'll come back to that. And in this video, I'll show you what you can do with Skahoy controllers in terms of shading for these cameras, and I'll show you how you can configure your gear to be successful. So let's get into it. The problem we are trying to solve here is related to if you do not have a full Blackmagic design infrastructure around this camera. SDI is the key in Blackmagic's universe. They are using SDI return feed to the camera to bring shading information to the camera. By the way, it's a one-way road. It means that we can only send stuff to the camera. We can't read back from it. But that aside, it's, it's not going to be a huge problem because we store information in the RCPs. But the, the main point here is that we have SDI return feed as the carrier of shading information. And that usually originates from a Blackmagic um, ATEM switcher. And if you have one of the shading panels that will use this switcher to generate the information that goes to the camera. If you need something else, if you don't have a Blackmagic switcher or their shading panel connected to this, you need a Skahoy RCP to do the shading. It can also be a color flyover here. I'll just quickly look at that in the end of the video. But having the ability to use other equipment than Blackmagic switches to send information to the camera is essential if you uh, want to uh, kind of rip it out of their ecosystem and use it in, in other contexts. So that's what we're doing with the Ethernet SDI link here, where basically Ethernet is the carrier of the shading data to an SDI output on this one that goes into the camera. So SDI out, SDI in in the camera, and we move shading data over. If you also want your return feed from whatever, then you just input it on the input on this one. So that was a little bit on the uh, cabling of the Ethernet SDI link here and how it works with the camera. Also, this camera has, once again, no connection for a B4 lens. So if you fancy to put a broadcast lens on it, even if you find the adapters and everything, you cannot control the iris on a distance. Once again, Sky has solutions for that. It's from for a different video, but we have a product called Ethernet B4 Link, and that product also uses Ethernet to control a lens, a real broadcast lens that you want to put on this camera. Today we have a little, um, some uh, Micro Four Third lens that fits onto the camera. And actually it has zoom focus and iris attached um, to the internal electronics of the camera. So I can actually operate this lens from the RCP as we shall see in this video, which is really cool. But in many professional setups, you want to put a different lens on it. And in that case, you need a Skahoy RCP that will integrate those two things. And by integration, I mean that the Skahoy RCP can control all the, the sensor data in the camera through the Ethernet SDI link. And it could also control a before link, uh, before lens, um, broadcast lens attached to the camera separately from the iris joystick with uh, another means of communication. But that's for a different video. Today, we'll look at how we can shade this camera. And I want to move on to a demonstration of that. I messed up the image completely. It's really looking ugly right now, but that is to give me a chance to show you how I can control many parameters in this. Now, let's take a look at the RCP here. So you can see the general way our RCP is set up is that we have a menu section here, and then we have eight encoders that will allow us to uh, change parameters in the camera. So let's just quickly navigate the menu. This gives me access to gain and lift. Lift is like the black tones in the image. Gain is like... Um, um, I would say often whites, and then we have the gamma, which is like the midtones. Uh, here on the second level, a second page, I have the gamma, and we have the gain, and the lift is found on both cases, uh, both levels here. Then the final third menu gives me access to sensor gain, to shutter speed, to white balance, detail, hue, contrast, saturation, and focus. And even if I press the shift key down here, I will change my focus to coming soon. I also see that I have additional functions coming up down here, which is, uh, oh, I have a camera selector as well. So there is some stuff that we need to uh, investigate a little bit down here. But I want to start out on this menu because this is where all my trouble started. I, for instance, uh, decreased the contrast significantly. So I can just bring that up to about 50%, which is the standard value. And by the way, if I want to reset the camera, I can just press and hold, and then it will go to the standard value of 50 here. The same is uh, true for hue. This is why you 
you see the colors offset so radically. So if I press and hold you, you'll see I'm bringing that back to 180, which is the natural sensor point of this. But once again, this parameter in the camera can be adjusted on this encoder. And if you click the encoder just once like this, you go between uh, small steps. Now I, I have small steps and then I have uh, bigger steps if I... No, actually, that's not the case on this one. Okay, funny thing about this parameter. But anyway, Hue is definitely having this effect that you're seeing that I'm I'm rotating the color wheel of the unit. Saturation is another thing which is probably best um, f uh, put at around uh, 50. So I press and hold to reset here once again. And now we are getting somewhere with the image, I would say. Um, these cameras also need a little bit of sensor gain often. So you see sensor gain here adjusted by this bottom I, uh, button. I could uh, increase the sensor gain, obviously. Um, let's just put it at 12, which is uh, nice for this little demo because then the iris joystick has something to play. Iris joystick, yes, the main thing about an RCP I'm using to, uh, I'm, I need this joystick to be able to uh, adjust the um, iris, the aperture in the lens. And uh, this is what we usually do on this joystick. It has some super cool features as well that I'll show you in a moment. The white balance here, I know that my studio lighting is um, 5600, so I'll just uh, go to 5600 to have that put in place. And then detail has uh, low, medium, high and off, a setting that is also known in these cameras. Um, let's look at, now that we are around focus and zoom, let's look at how we can adjust these things. I just showed you that with this Micro Four Third lens, I have iris control with a joystick through the camera over the SDI and all that. So it's embedded in the protocol that I can do it. And you see the F stops here as well, but we'll come back to this. Now, um, the focus here, if I hold down my shift key, it gets into a zoom mode. So actually we have integrated a really, um, just a coarse way of zooming this camera. Typically, zoom is something you want your camera operator to do as, as well as focus. So having it on the RCP is a little bit unusual, but it can be useful to just tweak things. So um, let's just zoom. And you can see that I'm, I'm able to zoom in here. And obviously the back focus of this lens is horrible because the picture is pretty well in focus right now, but it is definitely not here. But this is awesome because now I have a chance to show you the focus function. And the focus function um, is uh, operated here on this knob as well. So you can see as I'm turning the knob, I am adjusting the focus of the image. And I can get it right into focus right there. This is super great. I now zoom out a little bit and then probably it goes out of focus again. So I can now work the focus a little bit on this right there. And it's perfectly in focus, super cool. Um, let's zoom out again so we can see the Tesla Roadster as well. Yeah. All right. And focus is off once again. I need to get that in place. So you can see I can do lens control of um, zoom and focus as well in this case. Now, the shading part of working with this camera is to adjust the colors of um, lift, gamma, and gain. And let's go to this menu here. Um, if I turn the red knob, you can see that I'm increasing the red tones in the black. Once again, I can press and hold to reset. If I turn this one, I increase the green. If I press here, I should see different size of steps. And I can do the same with blue and completely screw up the image. I press and hold to reset. So same thing is uh, the case for gain. Um, the Y gain is basically like a, a general gain for all channels while I can go in here with red, green and blue. I think Blackmagic Design, they are marketing this as Da Vinci uh, Resolve color uh, methodology and uh, it definitely seems very elaborate to me I, I kind of like how they divide it into red green and blue like this because it, it feels very intuitive uh, knowing where you want to go to adjust the uh, the image but obviously all these parameters are available I will just reset them once again here because we don't like to screw the image up like this and then we have the gamma settings here um, which I can also adjust. So these are all available to me. Now, there's one of these settings which are generally known as Master Black. And we often put that down on this encoder and often on the ring of the joystick. It's really on the ring of the joystick where this belongs because the ring of the joystick is um, it's, it's kind of a one-hand operation that you can adjust the iris of the camera by pulling the joystick like this. And then you can also adjust the master black by moving the ring here. And on our new RCP joysticks, this is, by the way, a super cool encoder. You should check out the RCP Pro, um, a new product coming out from Skahoy that um, is like top-notch 
taking this above and beyond, but uh, that's for a different video as well. Uh, but this ring is very important to a shader that you can control Iris as well as Master Black in one operation. And the parameter it adjusts, the one that you see in the display here, is actually Lift Y. So this is the Master Black on Blackmagic cameras. All right, final thing about the uh, RCP joystick. If you notice, my lens is limited. I, on, on the last part of the joystick travel, nothing happens, okay? But you see, about this point, I can, I can also audibly hear the lens because it's the, you know, the clicking you see is not the joystick, it's actually the lens because it has a stepping iris. So just keep that in mind. If you had a B4 lens, it would be totally smooth or some other lens without stepping iris. But around here, so it's like uh, f3.6, 3.4. This is about the place where this lens has nothing more to offer. And it's like all, almost halfway up on the joystick. I would like to have the full range, but on this RCP, I am able to set a limit. So see what I'm doing now? I'm pushing it all the way to the top and I have uh, F1.4 here. So what I'll do is hold down the shift key and on the shift key I get limiter here and I can now reduce the top limit a little bit so that finally I'm basically saying that the top iris should be 3.4. What it means is that now I have iris on the full range. Let's just see. And all the way to the top, I had now iris control on the joystick. I might even give it a, just a tiny bit more. It felt like this would be the right place. So this is really cool because in that sense, you can adjust where's the range of adjusting the iris on the joystick. And I like that quite a lot. Okay, I think I want to wrap this video up. Um, there's not so much else to say about this one. We have active panel, which is a standard feature that will just log out the panel completely. I have, if I hold down the shift key, I can have bars on and off here. It's a test feature of the camera. And I can also change which camera I'm operating. So notice here that I am able to actually work with many Blackmagic cameras. So basically what happens is that I'm currently on camera number five and it is sending this out to the camera. This has an ID number five, but if I change to number six, then you may ask, so what about camera number six if it was here, but this is cabled up to that one? Yes, you would need the output of this guy to be distributed to all your cameras if you wanted to adjust camera number six on this RCP, like if you had a single RCP doing that. Obviously, if you... Uh, rather had this RCP and this one talking to this camera and you had another set next to, of course, you would just need to set the ID of this one. But you, you can do many uh, workflows like that. So it's uh, definitely possible. Okay, so <clears throat> to um, just characterize what we're doing here, we are using the Ethernet SDI link over Ethernet from the RCP over Ethernet. These are talking to each other over Ethernet. We also do have some products where the uh, SDI shield is built into the product, so you don't need Ethernet to, for this one to talk to this one, but it has some significant advantages. Like I just said, you can do away with a very short cable, so you don't need to take SDI all the way out to your camera. Otherwise, if you had the SDI output in the RCP, you would need to have a long SDI cable back to this guy. But this removes that necessity, and you could even do it over a Wi-Fi network if you had such infrastructure in place uh, to facilitate it. It also means that any Skahoy controller is able to work with the Ethernet SDI link. So it wouldn't have to be an RCP, it could be an inline 10, or it could be a Colorfly, like this one over here. So quickly to just mention the Colorfly, the Colorfly is a multi-camera um, uh, device. It In this section, it would have the same menus as you have here. It would uh, have um, menu keys that assign the encoders up here to functionality. It will have a camera selector down here for uh, selecting your camera. And the faders here would basically adjust up to four cameras at a time, the iris and the master black. So that's how the Colorfly is set up to do multi-camera control in a very, very, very compact form. So that's great for small OB vans and flyaway kits and, and so on. Okay, finally, I just want to mention that the Ethernet SDI link also has alternative firmwares. What you've seen here is the main way it's supposed to work. But we also have ways where you could have two of these connect to each other over a um, VPN, or you could even have this connect directly to an ATEM switcher if you really need to get out of the constraints of the SDI workflow. So it's a Swiss Army knife in terms of working with Blackmagic cameras and um, converting networked 
signals into the shading commands over SDI from uh, many different sources. And most obviously, Skyhoy controllers is um, all designed to be able to, to do this. So that was the Ethernet SDI link and how you can work with the new Blackmagic uh, Studio Camera Pro 4K. Uh, great product, we love it, and I, I, I love so many things about how Blackmagic Design are uh, approaching shading. So there's uh, a lot of good to say, and there's also a lot of things that we can help you solve with this camera to enable other lenses, to enable uh, Blackmagic Design um, uh, other workflows than, than those that has an ATEM switcher in the middle. So come to us and ask us, uh, follow us on, on the social media channels and ask questions to our support crew if you want to know how we can uh, enable things that you, you can't seem to find a solution to immediately if you, if you look only at Blackmagic's um, own ecosystem, uh, then it's pretty likely that we have some way we can help you out.